Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of parametric equations and their plane curves that are the graphical representations of them. Importantly, here's the definition of a plane curve and the parametric equations. This will, sound a, this will feel a little bit difficult at first. What we'll do is make sure we do an example and see how this is tied to the normal coordinate system with the X and Y's that you feel comfortable with. So what we say, a plane curve is a set of points, X and Y, that satisfy these two equations. Importantly, what we're stating right here is that instead of having Y as a function of X, so Y equals some jazz with equal to X, instead what we're going to do with both X and Y, and we can do this in three or four more dimensions, but just stick with this two-dimensional representation, we're gonna define X and Y with their separate equations in terms of a variable called T. And again, to get some vocabulary out of the way, the graph of parametric equations is called a plane curve. These equations right here that define X and Y are the parametric equations. And this new variable T, which is like this third party variable that we're bringing in, this variable T is called the parameter. To say it again, because it's really important, what we're going to do is describe X and Y with this third player. So player three has entered the game. This, the player three is this parameter that's going to define X and Y separately. So there's not this tight link directly between X and Y. We're using a third party variable to define both X and Y, but then we can graph those X and Y points as we always have on the rectangular plane. And it's important, as we'll talk more about this, this variable t, at least at first, it's the easiest to think of it as time. It doesn't necessarily have to be time in every application, but honestly, in a lot of applications, it is time, as in my first example. All right, in this example, we're being told that a baseball is hit at 100 feet per second at an angle of 35 degrees. Then we're being told these parametric equations that describe the horizontal and the vertical component of the height of the ball separately right here. And this is very important. So this right here, X of T, is describing the horizontal position of the ball. And Y of T is, being, is describing the vertical position of the ball at time T. So this is something very similar and very different than what we've seen before. In this case, we have the motion of this ball being tracked separately with the horizontal and the vertical components, that's very important in terms of T. If we want to model this ball generally before, we could model the height of this ball given time or the horizontal position of the ball over time or the height versus the horizontal position. But what we're being allowed to do now is analyze both the height and the, the, the horizontal distance in terms of time. And to attach the vocabulary to this situation, our parameter in this case is seconds, t in seconds. Our parametric equations are these two equations right here. By the way, you probably don't need to know this at this point, but we could have found these anyways. All of these are, are the vertical and horizontal components of this situation. You could think of this in terms of a vector. So if we ha hit this ball at 35, degrees and it has a magnitude of 110 feet per second. Um, what these two terms are simply analyzing is the horizontal component. So given this information, how strong are we going this way right here? That's taken care of by this statement, which is just the cosine of 35 solved for that X component right there. And this right here is exactly the same thing, but for the Y. So again, these terms are just saying when that ball is hit, this will calculate the actual horizontal speed or horizontal um, velocity, and this will be the, the, the vertical velocity. And then to put a button on it, these two terms right here simply state this five means this ball started at five feet off the ground, and this is the effect of gravity over time on the vertical height. And that's just to give you an idea of where these equations come from, but really not necessary in this situation. Let's clean these up a little bit. This is just a constant. I, obviously, this cosine part isn't a variable part, so let's just multiply these together. When I've done that, I got that this is 90.1t. 
So that is the horizontal component or horizontal parametric equation. Um, for y right here, when I clean this up, what I get is five. This right here becomes 63.1t and then still minus this 16t squared. So I am gonna answer the question being asked, does it clear this seven foot wall that's 300 feet away? But given this is our first example, I wanna play around with this a little more. What I'm going to do now is make a table of values, look at the sketch of the plane curve described by these parametric equations and make a couple important points before we go back and answer this question. So to create a table of values, what I'm going to do are just take some values of t. In many cases, we're given a very specific interval for our parameter. In this case, we haven't, but I'm just gonna go this far four seconds later. I don't know how long a ball stays in the air, but this feels about pretty good. What I'm going to do now is given my two parametric equations, I'm gonna plug t equals zero in, and I'll do this first one really quick because it's pretty straightforward. When I plug a zero in for t, my x value is zero because 90.1 times zero is zero. When I plug zero in for t and for y here, these two terms go away and I'm just left with five. And this is what we should expect if we understand these equations is that at time zero, it hasn't traveled horizontally at all, but it starts at its, its starting point at five feet off the ground. And then finishing off this table, if I plug a one in, what I get for x is 90.1 and for y, I get 52.1. And now I'll just finish up this table. Again, all I'm doing is plugging these values for t into both of them and plotting those values for x and y in the same row. So again, this is the part that is very different from what we've seen before with our normal functions. Given each parameter value, what we're getting out are two different values. We're getting the horizontal distance and the vertical height at the same time. So for instance, in this case, what we know about this situation is that after two seconds, the ball is 180 feet horizontally from the batter and it's 67.2 feet off the ground. One thing you're gonna notice about these two that should make sense as you think about the uh, ball traveling is that for the x values, it's only getting greater and greater and greater. So over time, the horizontal distance is only increasing, but the vertical height is changing. It's going up here to about 67.2. That's probably not the maximum, but maybe close. And then it's falling back down due to the effect of gravity, this negative 16 point t squared. So let's then graph this on the rectangular coordinate system. Again, we have these ordered pairs described by x and y. Importantly, when we go to graph these, we need to denote the parameter value for each of these points. And why this is very important is that very differently than our simple x, y, or our functions that we've had before, parametric equations, their plane curves, which is the graphical representation, have a certain orientation or flow. And so if we connect these dots, because this is a continuous function, this ball is not just jumping to these dots, Importantly, you'll notice what I put in there are these arrows. Those arrows were not present in a normal x, y function or two variable function, but in parametric plane curves, they're always there. There's a certain orientation or direction. It doesn't have to be in the, the, the direction of increasing x, it could be backwards. But when we've drawn this, we have our times that we plot there. We, we connect those dots. We also need to put arrows to describe the direction of this situation given the increase in our parameter. All right, now let's answer the question. The question again was, given all this jazz, given this picture of this playing curve that we have now, does it clear a seven foot fence 300 feet away? And how I'm going to attack this is in two steps, and this is often necessary when answering questions here. Again, I have two separate functions, one describing the horizontal position and one the vertical position. What I'm going to do is use this information right here so I know the fence is 300 feet away. What I'm going to do then is find out when is the ball 300 feet away. And I can answer this by setting this x equation equal to 300. What I'm going to do, so I'm gonna set this 300 equals 90.1t. So what I've set is the horizontal distance equal to 300. Solving this is gonna give me the time at which 
This ball is 300 feet away. So horizontally from the batter, it's 300 feet away. When I do this, I divide um, 300 by 90.1 and I get that this occurs at 3.33 seconds. So I know the time at which the ball is 300 feet away. And now I need to say, hey, is it at least seven feet? So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to find the height at t equals 3.33 seconds. And I do that simply by plugging it into this function right here. So y of 3.3 equals five plus 63.1 times 3.33 minus 16 times 3.33 squared. And then when I plug that into my calculator, I get that after 3.33 seconds, the height of the ball is 37.7 feet. So given that analysis, the answer is yes. Yes, this ball would clear a fence that's 300 feet away because after 300 feet, this ball is still 37.7 feet off the ground, well above the wall. This person has hit a home run. To talk about the plan of attack, what I said is, hey, I want to find out when the ball is 300 feet away, how long after the batter hits that. Once I know that, I have the per specific parameter value that I can plug back into the vertical function to find out its height. I actually could attack this in the opposite way if I wanted to, if it made sense. I could have first found um, at what time um, does this ball have a height of seven? So I could have set that equal to seven, found my T values, and then plug those back into X to analyze the situation. Though you might see that, man, if I was gonna solve one of these two equations for a, for a certain value, I definitely uh, wouldn't use this over this because this is a quadratic. It's got decimals, quadratic formula is messy. So that's why I did it in this direction. Um, but the, the plan of attack, no matter what the context is always the same. I have two separate components or two separate functions that describe my X and my Y. I'm going to use my information to solve for one of them. I'll get that parametric value or the value of the parameter, and then I'll plug it in the other to analyze fully what's happening at that time. All right, I wanna do one more thing with this example. First and foremost, if we look at the plane curve for this situation, you might be thinking, wow, that looks like a quadratic, like a parabola. Can it be described as y in terms of x? The answer is absolutely yes, but really importantly, if we do that, we're going to lose some of the information that we have here. And again, that's because we actually have three variables with, this, with these parametric equations. We have a parameter, which is seconds, and then two things specifically being described in terms of that variable. Though if we wanted to look at the relationship between X and Y um, directly, we actually can do that. We call this eliminating the parameter. And what it allows us to do is write this as an equation, this relationship between X and Y as an equation directly relating X and Y. For a lot of different reasons, this idea of eliminating the parameter is a really important skill. I won't go into that now, but you're going to see more examples. I'll just show you how to do it right here. What I'm going to do is I'm really in a way, kind of like solving a system of linear equations, I want to eliminate the T, so eliminating the parameter. What I'm going to do is take either one of these equations um, and I'm going to solve it for T. So I'm going to use this one right here because again, it's a lot more easy. So I'm going to take the fact that x equals 90.1t. If I solve this for t, what I get is t equals x divided by 90.1. Then what I'm going to do is take this second equation right here, which is y equals 5 plus 63.1t minus 16t squared. And what I'm going to do is substitute this expression in for t. And what you'll see that what it will do when I replace t with x over 90.1 here and here, it's going to make this equation of y in terms of x. And so then plugging that in, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this where I have my t, I'll throw some parentheses in here, so minus 16 and then t squared. And then I'm just going to substitute this equivalent expression to t of x over 90.1 in both of these cases right here. And that actually does the work of eliminating the parameter. I now have equation of y in terms of x. 
Though I feel compelled to clean this up a little bit, um, all I need to do is just take care of these fractional pieces. I'm just going to take this 63.1 and divide it by the 90.1. Uh, and then importantly here, when I do this, just to just remind you, I'm going to apply this exponent of 2 to both the x squared and the 90.1. And when I do that, what I get is 5 plus 0.7x. And then here I get 0.00197x squared. So what this is now is a relationship between the horizontal distance of this ball, so how far it is horizontally and the height. What I have lost, importantly in this analysis, is the idea of time. I have lost the idea of, well, when is it? Well, what, when is this happening? I don't know that. This is just a relationship between horizontal distance um, and my height. And then if I graph this, what you will notice, this will always work this way, when I replace the plane curve, with this function here, what I get is exactly the same looking thing, but again, what I've lost is that orientation or the flow of this curve as time goes on. That said, eliminating the parameter is often one of the best ways to analyze a set of parametric equations. It can ground you. If, when you eliminate the parameter, it gives you a shape that you're used to, you can then look at it and say, oh, what this is for sure is a parabola. It's parabolic. It's concave down because the negative lead coefficient and jazz like that, that can really help things. And then if you did create this from these parametric equations, you actually can go back and work on giving it the flow as we did in our original plane curve based on the interaction of the parameter and the two variables.